Hi, this is Alexis Richardson from Weaveworks, also Monadic on Twitter. Very happy to be talking today at GitOpsCon in the keynote. I want to talk about great moments in technology. You know, if we look back in time, uh, these things are very obvious, um, but sometimes they're less obvious in the present, aren't they? I think radar is a really good one. I'm not so sure about uh, the teddy bear, but maybe so. But let's think about the present day. What, what great moments in tech can we think of? Well, I'm here today to talk a little bit about phones, actually, as well as GitOps in a minute. Let's have a look at this. This is the history of what Apple did. Many of you probably know about this. And you can see a very obvious change in their financial fortunes not long after the iPhone launched um, and also the App Store there in 2008. That was a very significant moment for Apple and then the iPad as well. It was a, almost a new era for them, the iPhone moment, to be called it. And the App Store was just as important. That let you choose what apps to run, run them on your phone or multiple devices when it was supported as well. Um, this made things just really easy and fun and uh, probably was responsible for the growth of Facebook and many other things that we take for granted today. But GitOps, Kubernetes, their enterprise software. So let's think about the iPhone while we ask the question, will the enterprise have its iPhone moment or its App Store moment, if you prefer? But when will that be? I don't know if it's happened yet. Um, everything is still in the early stages, a bit like the web in the 90s. Enterprise, that's a funny word, isn't it? It conjures up enterprise IT and things like the IT crowd and all of the jokes. You know, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? As I frequently ask why I say to my parents. Um, but actually, the irony here is, you know what? It's very hard to turn off enterprise software compared with, say, an app on a phone. Um, it just keeps on running. If you can't turn it off, you may keep on paying for it. That's a bit annoying as well. Um, secondly, have you ever tried to upgrade a complex piece of enterprise software? It can take a very long time. And if it does happen, it may not happen in the way you expected. Do you get a chance to go back and do it again? Not necessarily. That's not great. Dependencies, question mark. So upgrades are tricky. And so typically people don't delete enterprise software. It just goes into a kind of sedimentary layer. If you go into a big company, you might go in deep down into that layer and find things at the bottom. Or know that there's open stack somewhere down there. So the three demons, if you will, of enterprise software, you can't stop it, you can't upgrade it, you can't delete it. That's pretty tricky. What if we could have a better world? Now, I'm not saying this is true of all enterprise software, but, but let's compare it with the phone. Come on. Much easier to install, which means the concepts like migration across devices is, is there. Simple life cycle we can understand. We can stop apps whenever we want to. We can delete them, remove them from our lives. And they can be kept up to date automatically, or we can have little gateways to say, hey, do you want this patch? And what's really nice is the app store model. You know, you've got this concept of a group of people who are certifying and checking, verifying changes for you before you get sent applications that you might want to install or not. Um, they'll certify those changes and therefore you are happy. You trust them to give you only the things that you want or need and not do anything damaging or insecure. Very, very important. So could that be true in an enterprise? And, you know, I'm an optimist. Cautiously optimistic Panda says, perhaps we could do this with Kubernetes and GitOps. First thing is Kubernetes does actually serve apps. This is an app server. It's not a cloud. It doesn't do multi-tenancy very nicely on-prem. It's much better if you have lots of clusters, lots of applications in lots of places. Now, people think that's complicated to manage and we're getting better at that, but it is much more like an app server than a cloud. And it's also something you can customize, which is really powerful. And it runs everywhere. Look at these vendors. We've got Google Anthos, Azure Arc, Amazon, EKS Anywhere, VMware Terms, and others running on-prem and in the cloud and in the edge. So I can have Kubernetes apps on any of these clusters wherever I like. That's a bit closer to a phone world. Standard API is probably one of the main reasons that Kubernetes 
is like the Linux of its era. It's going to be around for a while. And the cluster API in particular is a new standard for managing clusters declaratively, which means that you can treat whole fleets of clusters as just a set of declarations and orchestrate them to correct state using GitOps, of course. And that in turn means that if you've got clusters from different vendors, like an Amazon VMware cluster and an open source cluster from KubeADM or something, they all support CAPI today. So you can manage them for a single point using your own tool that speaks CAPI or a vendor tool. One tool to rule them all, or one tool to do them all at least, is much more useful than having lots and lots of different incompatible vendors. And then speed. You know, getting a cluster booted up is getting really quick now. Once it's fast enough, and I was talking today to a colleague who's done a two-minute boot on Metal, once it's fast enough, it starts to become part of an application experience. As we automate and simplify Kubernetes better, lower the cost of operating it, then this will just become invisible dial tone infrastructure, which is great for apps. And look, Codespaces shows and Amazon Lambda as well how quick you can be if you've got warm environments you can get things down to seconds that's incredible and that is the future people will be able to start and stop environments applications clusters and stacks in the time they need operations the missing piece always left to last GitOps solves this provides a mechanism to deploy update manage and operate changes and applications and whole clusters through CAPI and fleets through CAPI and using tools like Flux to do apps and services and Flagger for rollouts. All these things, whole stack, a full stack solution can be done using GitOps, using your choice of Git and CI tools. You pick which ones you want. GitHub Actions, GitLab, um, you know, runners, etc. GitOps is something that we can use in very advanced cases like policy management for fleets, progressive delivery, uh, dealing with complex workflows or new applications, or very simply day zero, just deploy my app, please. Or just start me a cluster and then update it, please. Thank you very much. So GitOps is both for beginners and user, advanced users, just like apps. One of those new advanced cases is platform as code. So unlike uh, typical consumers, enterprises want to have their own customized app development. They don't want to have just apps out of the box like Salesforce, they want to write their own. That's why they have large numbers of developers working for them who then need to operate these things. So that's a difference. Can we manage that in the iPhone to the phone style world? I think we can. If we have a way of describing and managing, patching and updating these platforms, which are just add-ons to the clusters like Prometheus, Helm, uh, Fluent D, et cetera, et cetera, um, in a single way using things like profiles or application management tools. There's actually a bunch of different ways of doing this. At WeaveWorks, we like profiles. It's a way of capturing groups of features. And the other thing about platforms is that you can embed policy into them so that you can prevent people from doing the wrong thing or make sure they do the right thing. Don't accidentally you know, use the wrong password, for example. And so Let's look back at that app model and compare it with what it gives us in the enterprise now. Gosh, we can have clusters that we can start and stop where we want to because of GitOps, we can turn things off and we can restart an identical cluster wherever we want to because GitOps lets us manage whole stacks correctly based on the description in Git. Certification changes slightly. Instead of having the app store team certifying our apps, an enterprise platform ops team will certify them for us and the policies and the verified operations tools for monitoring observability that we might want to use. But we can do customized apps in a way that suits the app world. We get updates. Again, I'm probably going to want to permit the updates to come through. Don't necessarily want to automate everything. But by and large, what you can see here is we're getting much closer to an app store type of world. That's the incredible benefits and simplicity of Kubernetes and GitOps coming together for you for any cloud, any apps on any Kubernetes anywhere. So you must help us make this world happen. You must start your journey today using GitOps. We've GitOps is a good way to start. Let's not be dinosaurs. Let's be in a new, simple, simple world of applications uh, like an app store world. And I hope you're part of making that happen.
And I hope we can help you make that happen too. Thank you for listening today.